offering the prayer in the house chamber and the celebration of the anniversary of the birth of Guru. That was the time when we look at the world scenario at that time. Columbus was here in 1492. This is the same century Vasco de Gama was in Goa on the shores of India. And great reformer Martin Luther in Europe was coming up with reforming and challenging the existing corrupt priestly stuff. And Guru Nanak's challenge, and as when we look today's world, over 7 billion people on this planet, our strife ridden world, it may be Middle East, it may be Afghanistan, or it may be subcontinent, which is Indian sub Indo Pak subcontinent, where over one and a half billion people live, and two powers, nuclear powers, India and Pakistan, are seeing eyeball to eyeball with each other on the issue of Kashmir. Similarly, five and a half centuries ago, society was taught on one hand there was a very negative caste system as when we talk about U.S. Declaration of Independence, we must look at that 243 years ago, a message went from here in Philadelphia under the Declaration of Independence that we all are born equal. But much before that, if we may have to look at the dream of our founding fathers. Sikhism is the prototype of that society which was envisioned by the founding fathers of this great country. Equality, love for all, as all the creation is of the God Almighty, let we all treat each other and, as brothers and sisters, tolerance for the belief system of others, and the very cardinal principles of Sikhism are earn your bread honestly, share it with the needy, and always remember the God Almighty who has blessed us with all the bounties on this planet. And the journey of Sikhism for the last five and a half century has not been the easier ones today. In the United States of America, there are over one million Sikhs. Sikhs came to this country in the last part of 19th century but they went through great, great struggles here even to get the citizenship after the First World War, the classic case of Dr. Bhagat Singh Thin, who was a fighter in the First World War in the American Army, but he was denied citizenship. We know the history until 1930s, but we have the honor that the first congressman in the U.S. Congress was a Sikh, Dilip Singh Son, in the 1950s. He was three-time congressman. Similarly, today the Sikhs are in all professions and in this great state of Massachusetts, which we always look as an ideal from where the American Revolution challenge began. And when we talk about Sikhism, if we don't talk about the challenge which Sikhs faced from, from the four powerful emperors, from the four more, more, more powerful Delhi regimes, it may be the Mughals, it may be the invaders across Garai Khaibar, it may be the British colonial, or even today, where we come from, what kind of persecution the minorities in that country are facing. In spite of all that, the Sikh mission has been of love today. Sikhs, are, Sikhs live in over 150 countries in the world, 5 million Sikhs are in diaspora outside India and we want to thank today especially where the whole of this house for recognizing Guru Nanak as a prophet who is a man we call Guru Nanak the prophet of human time. He may be the Guru of the six. Guru literally means this pillar of darkness but Guru Nanak's message is of 
humanitarianism, love for all, justice for all, liberty for all, and liberty and justice are very foremost door of Sikh philosophy. We want to thank the government of Pakistan that on this occasion they have opened that Kartarpur corridor. You must have seen in the news, Kartarpur is the place where Guru Nanak spent last 18 years of his life. He tilted that soil, he gave a message of love to all, but that was closed for the Sikhs for the last 72 years after the partition of India. Now this Kartarpur corridor should become the corridor of love between these two alienated South Asian countries, those who are not ready to talk with each other on the issue of Kashmir. So today, I want to congratulate all of you and at the same time, we need to pray before God and the very foundations of this country are also in God we trust and we see that whatever is happening, we need to pray and I will conclude with that. Janat Janata Ratle, Apri Kirpatar, Jit Dwara, Ubre, Tirta Leo Kuban, O God Almighty, save this burning world. We are not capable, we don't know what we are into, but you, the great Almighty, save us from all negativities, from all wrongs. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Trevor Moore, and I'm the member of Civil and Human Rights Council of the World State Parliament, and I'm also the General Secretary of the U.S. Region, and I'm from Oklahoma. Just over 550 years ago, a blazing light came to the earth. He was called Gurunana. Why was Gurunana called the blazing light? He was called the blazing light because he was a social revolutionary reformer who challenged the cultural and religious norms in the 15th century in South Asia by forefronting the importance of women in our society. This bold declaration determined to erase the impurities of the Indian society. We are not able to empower the common person to seek and realize God by living an honest family life, free from rituals and pilgrimages. His teachings were designed to promote equality among all humans, irrespective of color, caste, group, creed, gender, or race. For him, the creation was from one God, and there could be no one who could claim to be superior or inferior from each other. This concept was very new to people back then when Hindus practiced caste system, which defined social, occupational, and religious conduct. But Gurunadeji was the one who stepped up against all these social vices. Gurunadeji started his revolution, which continued with the nine following groups. On the status of woman, Gurunadeji said, From woman, we are born. Within a woman, life is formed. From a woman, a man is engaged and married. With a woman, future generations continue. So why call her bad or inferior when future uh, when kings are born from her? With the birth of Khalsa, the last barriers of gender and caste oppression had been smashed. Rubomi Sikhji's envision of women to keep weapons symbolized that he did not envision his role in society just that of being a nice, meek housewife, but being this fearless, active, independent warrior involved in this world. If you look at America's history, 1920 was the year when women got the right to vote. But they're not going to already declare women equal a long time ago in the 15th century. In England, it was a Sikh woman named Sophia de Lipsey, the granddaughter of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, who was a prominent leader in the suffrage movement and brought a significant change to the revolution. So today, we celebrate the day as the birth of a revolutionary who changed our society forever. Gurnana Nindi's ideas are still practiced today among 30 million people across the world, making Sikhism the fifth largest religion in the world. There are many organizations working to serve the humankind, which makes Gurnana uh, Devji presence in this world. Sikh organizations work to serve the humankind by setting up food banks and shelters in the war zones, providing free education and health care globally and works in Parliament that works to safeguard the rights of minorities and Sikhs globally. The world inspired by Guru Nanak's message will not suffer from exploitation, hunger, poverty, and discrimination, as it will be based on compassion, contentment, and sharing. So let's work together to create this ideal word of the Guru Nanak Deji that he envisioned a long time ago in, in the 15th century. Thank you.